Hey, until uh, the others come, let me start with a very small presentation. I usually do this only if I have time. Since uh, I'll delay a little bit, I'll take about five minutes and go through this uh, very quickly. <coughs> this is not my main presentation today. Uh, as engineers, we are called upon to attend uh, important meetings. Okay, and also uh, there are dress codes in various institutions. So for instance, most of the government organizations they are they are supposed to come in time, uh, all the executives. So uh, fortunately, there are no ladies today, so I can uh, talk freely because this main thing. Ah, there's one lady, oh, she is hiding behind somebody. You can see, okay, no problem. Uh, so this is only for the gents. I, I I can't talk on behalf of ladies because I don't know how they dress. So this is uh, what I call power dressing. Which means you have to be properly dressed for its occasion, right? Sometimes in the factory environment, all you know, you will be able to dress like this. <coughs> uh, the engineers need to stand above the rest in the society, okay? So you have to be smartly dressed and talk sense. So today we are going to talk about how to talk sense in the second part of my lecture, and keep your head up and straight. What do you mean? Keep the head up and straight, right? You can only keep the head up and walk straight if you are yourself straight in your character. If you are devious and if you are up to mischief, you can't keep your head up and walk straight, right? We generally call, talk, call it walk tall and walk straight. Now you may wonder why why Shavinder friend is talking about walking tall because he's short. Though I am short, I walk tall, right? Okay, because I can keep my head up and walk. That's what I mean by walking tall and walking straight. So let's dress smart and talk sense. Uh, talking sense will come in the second part, but uh, let's try to see how you dress smart. Now, power dressing for men. There are two rules that dominate the power dressing for men. Always play by the rule. There are rules. In terms of how to dress well, either you follow the rules or live up to the occasion. That's what I mean by never let up, right? Just because you forgot to iron the shirt or just because you could not wash the clothes, you can't just dress the way you like. So you will you have to, you have to live up to the occasion. Somehow you have to go and buy a shirt or whatever, uh, and uh, never let up. In fact, it happened one day to me. One day, uh, I found all of a sudden I had to go for an important meeting, and I had come in short sleeves. I immediately sent somebody uh, bought a long sleeve white shirt. My shirts are very easy to, and got it somehow ironed up, and asked them to bring it, and I wore it just before the meeting. So these are the key to projecting confidence and power. <clears throat> business suits, right? I hope you can see that clearly. I can't, of course, see that very clearly there. You know, the hot climate in Sri Lanka, though most through most parts of the world, you will be tempted to discard the jacket. Of course, you don't wear a jacket to office and so on and so forth, unlike in other countries. But in all likelihood, you can't. Well, if you are going for an important meeting, if you are asked to come up in a jacket, you can't avoid the jacket, right? You are part of a high-level conference or international meeting, then you may be asked to, asked to come in jacket, and you'll be required to wear one. So, for the impromptu occasion, keeping a blazer in the office is quite a safe way. In fact, it happened to me once again uh, for the second time. Uh, I had to go for an all-important meeting, and the dress code was lounge, that means jacket, and I simply could not find a jacket in office. I uh, those days I didn't carry a jacket to office. So uh, fortunately, somebody told me uh, I was my office was in Mardana. Uh, whispered to my ear said, "Why don't you go and try Donalds?" So those days Donalds was uh, still in operation. I quickly went to Donalds, and uh, somehow I tried few jackets and something suited me. Of course, I got a jacket and oh, it was not at all comfortable to me. So. Don't make that mistake again. If you are uh, rising up the ladder, 
maybe that one time you may have to keep a jacket, spare jacket in the office in case you are called upon to attend a very important meeting. So power dressing requires a fully tailored look with firm fabrics and crisp tailored look. But one suit in navy blue is a good one, pair it with multiple silk ties, some people don't wear silk ties and shirts you are good to go. Those days I don't think you know, we are very careful about it, the crease. I can still remember our olden people, when you are small, they used to uh, have trousers and there was a thing called starch, you put starch in the trousers, right, like something like a candle, right, and they, those days it was the polka to iron, they iron it and iron it and iron it until the crease is almost like a straight line, I don't know how many of you can remember, right, those days are gone but still. The crease was a most important thing in a trouser. Straight look, right? Now people don't care too much about it. Uh, shirts, don't show your forearms. We have full sleeve shirts. If it's hot, you may be able to do away with the tie. Having a full sleeve shirt on some occasions, uh, but never a tie with half sleeve shirts like this guy. This is not on, right? So if you are using to, used to, if it, I, at one time I used to wear uh, shirts with uh, folded or short sleeves. Now I don't do that because I find that it's not the proper way to dress. If you are wearing a tie, you always must have a uh, long sleeve shirt. Um, if you are casually going, short sleeve shirts are alright without tie. As for the color of the shirt, Match your dark suits with shirts in full contrast light shade. Now never wear a dark suit with dark navy blue shirts inside or dark red shirts inside. For a party, most certainly yes. We are talking of party wearing, we are talking of how to wear business, for business or for meetings. The pattern can be plain or in stripes. Keep away from the pinks, the yellows and the similar casual colors. I think to office it's not so good to go in pinks and the yellows and the greens and the what you call feminine looking colors. The people don't take you seriously, right? <clears throat> Traditional white shirts are safe. You can add pale blue or pinstripe shirts. I mostly I would use wear uh, pinstriped or pale blue shirts, and sometimes I wear white like today. Trousers keep the trouser lines straight. Now, trouser line straight means uh, the shirt and its line should be in one line, right? And the thigh should be in the center. Okay? Sometimes I see the belt here, trouser here, and the shirt somewhere. I have seen the people wearing like that, it's very ugly. So, keep the lines very straight. Watch the current fashion to decide on a flat fronted or pleated look, of course you can choose yourself. Match your trousers with your uh, suit. In fact, if it is in full suit, you have bought, avoid using the trousers separate and prevent the jack, uh, to prevent the, the wear out while the jack remains, jacket remains new. So very often I find that the same suit, the jacket is uh, looking almost new and the Trouser looking very faded. So, if you have got a one straight set of jacket and suit uh, trouser, always uh, wear them together. Shoes, very important, right? Now, black leather laced up shoes are norm of the power dress. Of course, I never used to wear laced shoes, uh, though I preach, but uh, for the power dressing, it's very important that you. Try to use uh, laced up shoes. Um, <clears throat> once I was in America and I thought I bought a nice pair of shoes. I was very, very junior. But I was about uh, less than 30 years old at that time. I bought a nice fancy pair of shoes and uh, with my trouser and coat and everything. For a party, I wore this. It was, there was an American, uh, sorry, African uh, gentleman who quietly came to my, me and say, to whispered to my ear, son, you should not wear fancy shoes with uh, uh, jacket and uh, with formal wear. So from that day onwards, I am very careful about selecting my shoes, what I wear. It's almost uh, 30, 
four years ago, right? Uh, so don't go for these extra long pointed shoes that reminds us of the elves. You have heard about the elves? Are sungaragana kathavali ni are malu de duera chur chur sabtu elves, right? Are they shoe the shoes like this? So don't wear these shoes with long pointed uh, fronts, right? I call them hanasu shoes, like hanasa, right? Because you you uh, may go and injure the person in front. So don't get caught to that kind of thing. So wear normal uh, shoes. Uh, but of course, if you are going for a disc or something in the evening, most certainly wear the one that you like. That's no issue. But this is for uh, good business wear. Always keep the shoes at high polish, match socks with the shoes or the trouser. Definitely not with the shirt. The socks sag or have a run on them, it's time to discard them. Accessories the ties. Ties are important accessories. Now, am I married or not? Am I married or not? I'm going to. Am I? Why? Am I married? Good. Most of you know that now, right? Those days, no, no one knew. If you, if you are married, the tie should not extend below the bend. If you are not married, generally the tie should extend below the bend. So those who are not married, make sure that you wear the tie slightly below the bend, or at least to the bottom level of the bend. Then girls will come behind you. And if you are still married and want to show that you are not married, you can do so, right? Ties are important accessories for men, choose them with care. The tie must complement the jacket, the navy blue, the red and the burgundy. So these are all in order. With small geometric stripes are safe. Now look at those ties. Sometimes I see when people going for this kind of uh, meetings with uh, all flowers and samanalayas and makaras and alias in the ties. That is not all. You can keep it for your evening wear. <clears throat> so, they are for the power dresser. Black belt with a simple steel buckle. So, like this, what I am having is a must. A general measure is that the buckle width should not be more than that of the belt itself. Huge buckles are not good for power dressing. The wallets are another matter. With the wallets in black, are right. Be religious about emptying them periodically. Don't make it very bulky. Right? You may have to have certain things, but of course, all my things are mostly cards of what one kind or another. Not that I won't show many great cards, but there are some cards uh, about my membership and various things. Uh, so, uh, but make it as thin as possible. Of course, I do not know how my handkerchief looks. Not so bad, still, after the day, right? Always have the hanky nicely folded into four. If it is white, it's much better. I might even have a, a small print, right? Pens, use normal pens. Don't use gold, thick pens, which show that you are a high and mighty. Okay, if you are a politician, do that. Right, <coughs> hair and grooming, uh, avoid overly gelled, like, like if you've got an electric shock, there are people who wear like this, right? Like Fido Dido. So don't wear uh, hairstyles like that. If you want to go for a disco, okay, no problem. In the evening, you can do any hair cut you like. But for when you're coming for a business meeting, nicely have the hair uh, combed. Stick to the classic styles and keep it neatly combed and yes, dandruff free. There's nothing like flakes of dandruff on your dark jacket to spoil the entire effect. Keep your neat nails manicured and clean. It's very ugly to see the nails long and sometimes black inside. Right? Oh no, not to go for tea. I'm not going to go to go for tea. Let's now go for the other one. I hope. Right. So this is the main part of my lecture today. I thought you asked to sit in front, right? You too. You came late. Okay. So rule of the game is that you 
come late, I don't punish you, I do punish you, I ask you to come and sit in front. Right, so these are first, actually my main part of the lecture. Uh, let's make sense when we talk and write. Now I must give you a warning. I am not an English teacher. <clears throat> so don't try to learn English from me. I am not qualified to teach you English. I am most certainly qualified to talk, let you know how to talk sense. And when you write, how to make sense. <clears throat> right? With a long years of experience and so much of experience, I definitely know how to tell you something to make sense and uh, write sense when you talk and write. But if you want to go for an English class, please go for a reliable English teacher. One day when I was uh, driving, my driver spotted uh, advertisement and says, sir, sir, my, my lecture, my lecture. He was going for English class. The famous Sakwita who is in the prison now, right? He was giving advertisement. What did he say? Uh, he was saying Mama I'm going to go home. I said, You are going to that class. I asked him, I'm saying we class it then. Waham Northern English class. But there's nothing called in English, I'm going to go. That's wrong way of putting that I'm trying to go. I can, you can say, I'm, uh, I'm going home shortly. I'm about to go home. And what they call, I'm going to go home. Right? These are all wrong. So therefore, the whichever way that we are, speak, we are used to speaking singular or Tamil, you just can't put the whole thing into Tamil, uh, English the way we like it. There are rules, and for the rule, those rules, the grammatical rules, you got to go to an English teacher and uh, learn. Why? I don't see any white skinned people here, which means English is not our mother tongue. From the time that we started speaking, our parents and our uh, elders were speaking to us in Singhala or Tamil. So our tongues and our ears and everything is now <coughs> tuned to Singhala or Tamil. Therefore, if you want to learn English, you go to a proper English class. I always uh, give this offer when I, whenever I want to uh, ask people to uh, learn, whenever I go to a new place, I first offer them an opportunity to go for an English class. And I always give them the opportunity to go for an English class. And there was one gentleman who was 56 years old when he joined uh, an English class. And at the time, the retiring age in CAB was 57 years. Of course, later it was 60 years. The beauty was that all my Goliaths later on started correcting my English. And that is what I like to see. Right? It's, it's, it was easy for me. I used to always give them to draft my letters. Right? So, take it to your heart. If you are not good in English. If you think you are weak in English, please go to a very good English class. Uh, University of Colombo has an English class and the IESL is starting an English class. I think it's starting tomorrow. Right? And uh, Sleeda is running an English class. So go to a good proper English class and learn English the proper way. Don't start try to learn English from me. I am not an English teacher. So when do we make mistakes? In writing we make mistakes. In talking we make mistakes. While speaking we make mistakes. In our gestures, we make mistakes. In our posture, we make mistakes. And the most difficult part, in our thinking, we make mistakes. But I will give you a small, small mental exercise. We are small, uh, small number of people. All of you mentally count the number of people immediately. Huh? Come on, come on, come on. You can, you can stand up or do anything. Count the number of people. I am going to ask you the question. Answer. Come on. Ready? Sit, sit. Ready? Have you got the answer? In which language did you come? 
In which language did you come? You don't get my question properly. In which language did you come? Singular. How many? Singular. How many devil? How many in English? You have the answer. Most of us think in Sinhala or Tamil. Right? So when you speak, especially, is genetically, or the, the, the way that we are used to, most of us first think in Sinhala or Tamil and then start trying to speak in English. That is where the problem is. Therefore, our, especially when you are think, uh, speaking or giving a speech, right? Your thinking process has to synchronize with your talking process. And we think very fast, much faster than what we talk. So we have we have seen people try right, unless you are practicing, uh, when, you, when you practice, right? You have difficulty for the people to get up and talk. You are not used to it. So you, as I said right at the beginning, as engineers, you can't do that. You may have to answer in English, you have to debate in English, you may have to argue in English and you have no time to think. So the only way you can do it is by practice. Right? In writing you can make mistake, talking you can make, in our gestures. Right? Now if I say, uh, oh it's so hot, do you believe me? I'm opening, right? I'm so hot. Do you believe me? You don't believe me? Oh, it's so cold. <laughs> right? Do you believe me? I'm opening. So your gestures, those are the gestures. Right? The gestures have to match with what you're saying. Other people don't believe you. If you're angry, you must show that you're angry. If you're pleased, you must show that you're pleased. Right? In the posture, now if I started the talk, I know I'll sit in there, you know, you make mistakes while talking and this thing. And this. Will you accept me? You won't. Right? So, the posture, the way that I stand and talk to you, is very important. So, what are the mistakes when we, we make in writing? Grammatical, the most common mistakes. Spelling. It can be easily corrected, but still people make mistakes in spellings. Contextual needs a lot of experience. You are supposed to come to the front row, my dear boy. You should thank me for calling you boy. Right? <laughs> okay. In the context, now that needs a lot of experience. Grammar, you go to a grammar teacher and learn grammar. Spelling, I have about 36 plus years of experience of public service. Until the last day in my service, I used to keep, ha, refer a dictionary whenever I have a problem. Still, I refer dictionaries. I don't sometimes rely on the on the dictionary in the computer, right? I also have printed dictionaries, and there are all kinds of dictionaries. There are dictionaries of idioms. There are dictionaries have shortened form. There are dictionaries that has uh, these Latin uh, phrases. People use randomly these things called bona fide, sine qua non, ipso facto, uh, pro tem, uh, via voce. Do you know what they mean? Malafide. Do you know what they mean? You got to learn what they mean. Don't use unnecessarily those things, phrases. That's because somebody is using. Right? So, for that you need dictionaries. Any book. Any uh, book exhibition you go to the BMS, you find dictionaries. It's a good investment to buy one. I still have a couple of dictionaries at home. Collins Gem Small Dictionary, Oxford Good Dictionary, right? all kinds of dictionaries I have at home. I still refer them. Sometimes I refer one dictionary, if I don't still get the meaning, I refer the second dictionary. People are shy to use dictionary. Why are you shy to use dictionary? It's a private matter for you. So please feel free to use a dictionary. When you write a letter, memo or a report, what is the difference between letter and a memo? Anybody? I want you to interact. If you don't interact, I am going to punish you. You know that, right? I am good at punishing people. So, what is the difference between a report and a memo? Come on. You asked not to speak. The last time I told you, you know that. Who don't speak? 
Yeah, what is referring to your memo and a letter? Somewhat. For internal correspondence, all the all the notes are memos within the organization. Right? You never write a memo to an outside organization. You always write letters. Reports, of course, you know what they are. Now the problem is when you write letter, memo, or report, remember the reader does not see your face. So reader does not know whether you are you are writing this in an angry mood, happy mood, or joyful mood, or whatever mood, right? They don't know. They will know what is what is in the paper, on the paper. You will not get an immediate reaction. And the most importantly, you will have to depend on the choice of words you used to create either a positive or a negative impression of you, your company, the matter at hand, and hence the final outcome. So this is the problem. I get letters written by so many people, and when the letters are not written properly and they have so many errors, what is the impression I get? What is the impression you will get? You think he's a shoddy fellow. He doesn't know anything. The content of the letter can be so good, but the letter is written so badly, you get a very bad impression of the person who, who is writing that letter. As I told you, he doesn't see your face. So he pictures yourself as a useless guy, irresponsible guy. What is the thing about the organization from which you, which you represent it? Still worse. Oh, these CB fellows. They don't know how to write letters. So don't ever get into that group. That's why you have to learn how to write good English, good letters. Now when you write, introduce the subject. Clearly describe the subject. Sometimes the subject line would suffice, now especially if it is an internal memo, right? Just the subject line would suffice. Because everybody knows what you are talking about. You don't need to write another paragraph to describe the subject. But sometimes in uh, important matters, you may have to write a paragraph with a sentence or two, at most three sentences, introducing the subject. Nothing more. Okay? Develop the case or subject. That's the body of the letter. Right? This is the main part of your argument. You may have a nice argument, but without the head, that is uh, the, the sub uh, introduction or subject, your body is just a dead body. That's why the subject line is important. And the subject line is uh, alone can cannot stand, start, uh, stand. You have to have the main body. That's the main argument. <clears throat> Finally, you don't write love letters anymore. I know that. Nobody will write love letters anymore. They only use the SMS, right? Those days, of course, in our time, we used to write love letters, right? But now people don't write love letters. When you are in business, you write official correspondence. Where you have to conclude your, your letter with a solution. Because the one that you use original letter is the is a master in that subject. That's why you're writing a letter, writing a report. You know the subject better than the other person. That's why you're writing that letter to the other person. Unless you're asking for an inquiry. You can ask, I am trying to do a thesis on uh, such and such a subject. Uh, I heard that, uh, Professor, you are an uh, expert in the subject. Could you kindly help me? That's a query. Right? That's, th that's also a letter, but that's a query. That may not have a conclusion, but if you are making a case for a certain matter, always remember that you know better than the other person to whom the letter is going. Probably he is also an expert, but the matter at hand, you are the best person to who knows. Therefore, you conclude with a solution or alternatives with reasons, right? That will help the reader to understand why you wrote this letter. Recommend the course of action you desire or recommend the decision the reader has to take. You I have seen letters, you know, even yesterday or day before, or last week I got a letter 
which has no conclusion. I didn't know what to do with this data. He is reading so many things. What am I supposed to do with this data? Is he asking me to do something or is he just uh, keeping me informed? Nobody knows. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very, very real. Responsible people do these kind of things. You can't do that. You must always conclude with the recommendation sometimes, with the course of action that I need to take. The reader has to take. You just don't write letters for me just because you have no time, right? And the reader will not read because he has no time. He has so much time, so many other things to do. So please, it's good if you can make a recommendation what the reader has to do. The opening paragraphs should be concise, short and positive. Create an interest in the reader to go on reading. Now there are instances where I have just got up to go home and I suddenly someone comes with a letter and the moment I look at the letter I feel like I must read on. Though I am in a hurry to go home I must sit back, I might sit back and read the whole letter. When does it happen? It only happens if the opening paragraph can capture me. So if you want the reader to go on with whatever you are writing, the op opening paragraph has to be very positive and should create an interest in the reader to go on reading. Right? Subsequent paragraphs should develop the details and appropriately separated for one issue at a time for clarity. Now, when did we learn paragraphing? Maybe in uh, year 3 or year 4, year 5, year 6. By the time you know when you start essays, writing essays, we know very well how to separate paragraphs. Still I find many responsible people mixing up two or three issues in one single paragraph. It's terrible. Don't do that. Always separate an issue for a paragraph. The closing paragraph should be courteous and polite. I will show you some examples. Right? The, uh, the, the closing paragraph should be courteous and polite. And also as I said before, make a recommendation if necessary. Give, a, give the reader the indication that you are expecting something positive from him, something, a decision from him. Right? Remember the old saying, the first impressions are lasting. Like the one that you met first time in your life, right? Fell in love with, right? You may not have married that person, but still I think I'm sure the first love is always in your mind. Right? I'm sure that is the case, right? If the girls or boys are alike, males or females. The first impression of the person to whom you love is always there in your life until you die. So like that, if you catch the person at the beginning, he will keep on reading. We remember the best thing we read last. Oh, you just had a cup of tea and came here, so what is in your taste? Not the lunch that you had, not the even the bun that you had, it's the taste of the tea that is in your, in the tea, tongue. So remember the last thing for a long time. And there are times that when I read some letters and went home without taking a decision, even in the night, in the sleep, in the dreams, I remember, oh, that fellow asked for that decision. First thing tomorrow I must go and give a decision on that. It keeps on lingering in your head what you read last. So, the, so it's very important, these blue lines. If you want, you can take it down and not, 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 not it will be available in your, in your website. Read and by heart. Keep that in your, in your head always. Whenever you want to write a letter or report or memo or whatever, remember these blue lines. Is absolutely true. The opening lines of, uh, of a letter often determines the destiny of the sale. Where is the letter going to end up? For me to keep it aside to read later? For me to immediately give a decision? Or for me to pass it on to someone? Or to pass it on to the WPB, waste paper basket? Right? So the opening lines are very important. The closing lines will result in a positive or a negative action. However nice the opening line is, that will only attract you to read them. 
then the way that you build up the argument and finally conclude will determine the destiny of the uh, will determine the result of the letter. Am I going to give a positive or a negative answer? So the closing lines are extremely important. Some make, yeah, yes, please. Yes. So then, if you have a strong argument, and then you put some um, goals that the reader has to put, then uh, they might be deviated from the original point that they mentioned in the subject. Very, yes. Very correctly, yes. Very correctly, yes. But do you think all the, all the readers are going to be stupid? They are stupid. You are right. What does it mean? You are clever. You have achieved what you want. You can build up a shoddy argument, give a very concrete, nice solution and if you manage to get that person to agree with you, you have won the day. But don't think everybody is going to be stupid as that. If they are stupid, you have won the day. They have got what you wanted. Right? But don't think they are stupid. If you take a decision, they will also read it. Right? But it's, there's a good chance that you achieve the results to get a very positive conclusion. So that you have, you have achieved what you wanted, right? I kept on saying you don't like, like cloud it. You are writing a letter with a purpose. You have achieved the purpose. Good. Good uh, that you asked that question. Some examples of opening paragraphs. I wish to draw your kind attention to the most recent improvements we have made to increase the productivity. Now, maybe that in that particular factory, the product has dropped. Right? Now, somebody is writing to the manager saying, I wish to draw your kind attention to the most recent improvements we have made to increase the productivity of the sheds, the, the, the production of, of the, uh, this particular line. Now, that immediately rings a bell in the manager's mind. Come on. What do I have to do now? I have to stop everything and read this letter. Now, somebody is making a suggestion how I can increase the product and what they have done. So I must read them. That's the way that you capture the reader's mind. Second line, I wish to draw your kind attention to the steps you have taken to create awareness which have resulted in improvement of the safety record. Maybe that in your particular factory, the safety record has dropped. There are so many accidents in the recent past. Right? Someone has made an improvement, tremendous improvement. You are very curious to know what are the improvements he has made. You are excited. Then you go on reading that. So these are the kind of opening paragraphs that are required in letters. More examples of closing paragraphs. I shall therefore be grateful if you could kindly look into. If you could kindly grant permission. If you could kindly approve. Now these are the kind of letters that you get from people other than Sri Lankans. We Sri Lankans have a very bad habit of writing very abrupt, very rude and crude letters. Very often if you find letters coming from uh, uh, peoples of British nationality, American nationality uh, or even uh, uh, Japanese nationality, uh, the, these kind of uh, letters are very common. What's wrong in writing being very polite? What's wrong in being very courteous? It doesn't make any, any problem for you. You can only hope that you get a good result. But what do we Sri Lankans write? Please grant approval. Please grant permission. In fact, I'll tell you a very, very correct story. This happened about uh, maybe six years ago, five years ago, when I was doing the Apagotpi Hyderabad Power Project. A very good friend of mine, a professor in civil engineering in the University of Morocco, wrote to me and said, the project director, blah, 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 blah. He could have easily written, Dear Shavi, that I would have gone on reading. Even he had made a mistake, I would have uh, uh, pardoned him. Dear sir, that's all right, there's nothing wrong in saying dear sir. But the next line made me furious. What did it say? Only two lines. Entire letter, two lines. Sign so and so. Please grant permission for the fourth year civil engineering group to visit Tapagotu Hyderabad project. Sign. Full stop. Sign. I really got the devil into my head. Good friend of mine. 
I wanted to teach him a lesson. Maybe he, was, he is about two years junior to me. So I wrote to him and say, dear professor so and so, I am received of your letter. I am not inclined to grant you permission because you have given me an order. Believe me, I wrote that. So he can get a letter, he can get the message. But I said, I shall however be uh, pleased to accommodate them if you seek my permission, if you seek my permission. He would have sought my permission, I would have granted his approval. If he sought my permission or my approval, I would have granted the approval. What did he do? He gave me an order. What will I do? I will not accept his orders. 100% real, right? So, what was the result? I waited for the reply, it never came. After three months I met this guy, I said, Machang, why did you reply that letter? I was joking, he asked me. Oh man, I, I saw it after I came back from such a such a trip overseas. And by the time when he came back, the batch has passed out and gone. Right? So that entire batch lost the opportunity to come to see the Hapagat Maybe 150 students lost that opportunity. That's the mistakes can be very expensive. I'll also tell you another story later on. Focus on you instead of I or we. Look at these sentences. I shall process your order in two weeks' time. Who is the boss? I. If I want to, I'll process your order. That's the impression I get. Instead of that, if you said your order will be processed in two weeks' time, what does it mean? I value your order and your order is being processed or will be processed. Immediately the reader gets the uh, message that the order is very important to me, important to me, not to him. The one who is processing the order is important to uh, pro, the one who is processing the order. Then he knows for sure if the order will be done. Right? We shall ship the products in two months time. If you want to, we ship the products in two months' time. That's the impression I get. So that if you say, your shipment will arrive in Colombo in two months' time. Right? See the confidence that the importer gets. So the, it's definitely coming in two months' time. I'm not going to, there are a whole host of mistakes and corrections in the next few slides. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll take, pick up a few things. They all come to me in the course of my duties and only few things. There are so, so many that have come uh, very, very uh, bad uh, letters. I'm not going to go through everything, everything but uh, these are in the, in, available to you. So please read them and carefully study them. Some of them are very absurd, so you can discard them. But they are all 100% authentic. 100% authentic. I have studied the letter which was sent by Mr. So and So of such as the estate, Talagale, indicating his problems. According to his request, he is the person one who did not get a new house. He simply say ekena, ekena, right? So he did to answer person one, person one. What he really wants to say is this: I have studied the letter sent by Mr. So and So of such as the estates in Talwakale, Mr. So and so is a person who is not entitled to a new house. See the difference in writing. Right? Uh, ha, this has six mistakes. I have I have uh, highlighted the six mistakes. Right? Uh, what are the mistakes? I have corrected the mistakes also. I want you to tell me what are these mistakes and why they are wrong. Come on, come on, you can talk. I'm taking a stick. If you don't talk, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm sending my stick. Okay. What's wrong with this? And why is that wrong? Or if you can read that, right? I wish to inform you that I have prepared a summary report on what we have done for dengue eradication program at our sites. 
and also we have taken remedial actions to minimize this problem. Report is attached to for you. There are six mistakes. All six mistakes I have highlighted. Tell me what are they and what is wrong with them. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you don't talk, I'll ask one of you to come, each one of you to come and explain why. And then you will be in a bit of a problem. Okay. Yeah, what is the first mistake? Attached and hearing. Attached and hear with is wrong. You are absolutely spot on. The idea is if you are attaching a report or something, where do you attach it other than here with? In English there is a rule, don't use superfluous words. Don't use unnecessary words. So here it is not required. You are absolutely correct. First mistake resolved. Second. Come on, talk, talk, talk. Program. Huh? Program wrong. Why? That's huh? That's American English. P R O G R A M M E is the correct spelling. Second mistake resolved. What are third? What is third? All highlighted. It's easy for you. Huh? And also is wrong. The word and is a conjunctive. Which means there should be a phrase in front to conjoin two parts of the sentence. So never start sentence with and. Third issue resolved, there are two more. Minimize this why? Huh? Why why? Spelling? Why? What's wrong with spelling? American English. Right, what is the last one? What's huh? No, no, hear with somebody said. Actions. Remember action. Ah, there's one more that you have uh, missed. There's one more that you have missed. The first time. What's wrong with that? Huh? What's wrong with the first uh, highlighted one? On what we have done for the eradication. What's wrong with that? I have a stick with me. No, 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 no. What's wrong with the eradication? Look at the context of the sentence. It's clear that somebody has, is writing about a dengue program, right? Maybe he's informing the bosses. What's wrong with that? On what we have done for dengue eradication, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What is the correction? Huh? Sorry? So what's wrong with the dedication? Huh? What's wrong with the dedication? What do you mean by dedication? Are you God? Are you a microbiologist? Are you, are you a biologist? You can't eradicate dingo. You can if you are a biologist and a uh, epidemiologist or a God. All what you can do is you can prevent dengue. You can have a dengue prevention program. You can't have a dengue eradication program. So see the subtle mistakes that you make. Right? It's very important that you understand what you are writing. So I will not uh, uh, further manage the highlight of the importance of following a proper entry permit system, provision system uh, to the existing grid substation, demarcating working areas in the energized substation with the color codes and taking all possible steps to avoid entering to existing substation after 8 pm. The whole lot of mistakes. The correct way of writing it. Further, the manager highlighted the importance of following a proper system of entry permits. Entry permission system is wrong. Proper system of entry permits is the correct way of saying that. To existing grid, sub grid substations. Demarketing working areas in the energized substations with the color C O L O U R codes and taking all possible steps to avoid entry to the exit substations after 8 pm.
the contract to inform that mr a b so and so will be nominated as the project manager for this project as curriculum vita is or submitted and saves that there are four mistakes what are they or at least three mistakes come on ha huh? why project manager is wrong ha huh? not capital why not why not what's wrong with not capitalizing is a position is not a generic word you are talking about particular person project manager correct what are the two mistakes easy come on ha huh? no start the set set the with and that's okay third one spelling is not bone vita we are talking about we are talking about carbo vita right not bone vita and when drink bone vita at home now i am not going through this lot please read them carefully when you go home right whole lot of mistakes maybe you have uh, you have also made this kind of mistakes in your life in your letters so learn this study this and uh, don't make them again so i'll not take time to go through each one of them except if i see something interesting what the last one is forwarding for your information pl dot forwarding what's wrong is forwarded for your information and necessary action please in letters you don't put pl dot if you're putting a small note handwritten note you can say pl dot right in a written letter you don't see write pl dot i have seen a lot of people doing that don't do that so this is all about road construction going on still the road construction i try to get something new next time ah now this came, this came in a email to me from a guy uh, who was working with me when i was doing the coal power project uh, uh, study there was so much of opposition in the country and when he went he wrote to me a very nice email and this is what he said if people can bring here people can bring here luggage to italy to see the sister of these countries have they'll definitely sort we want coal plant so people can bring here in a luggage yeah? i don't know what you want to bring the people or coal plant right so what is the we are correct of saying that the, if people can be brought here to see the systems in these countries they surely accept that we want we need the coal power plant this happened long time ago right if these people can have this in the city heart why can't we what's wrong what's wrong i was sleeping what what should be the correct word heart of the city heart of the city right if they can have this type of plants in the heart of the city i can't understand why we object to them in our country i remember jan shouting against highways you know right like this in uh, formal letters you know i remember the vociferous protests against the highways this very nice i am writing because i am typing fast what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong ha huh? fast what's wrong with fast <laughs> now you see some of them coming in real real uh, examples i have photocopied them and brought it to you because you will not believe me you know i keep on telling these things english is not our mother tongue okay we have learned english so either we have been speaking tamil or sinhala so our tongues behave in a manner for ages we are used to the way that we are speaking so we sort of miss tend to miss pronounce certain things but that doesn't mean that you should also write the way that is mispronounced so it's a typical case that he is just typing the way that he is speaking he definitely is saying past for the word fast right i shocked when i saw this 
Please write within your free time slots. Within W H I T H W. Uh, okay, I shall be grateful if you could kindly if you could reply them when time permits. Okay, I'll not go through this. So please be hurry to send us the missing information. I shall be grateful if you could send the missing information early. Aha, this is a very nice one. Now we are in the process of cleaning unpaid members. Not in the, this did not come in the ISL, right? That's for sure. This came from a society that I am engaged in. Now we are in the process of cleaning unpaid members. So you take a broom and clean the unpaid members, you know. Clean the unpaid members from the list. While we are doing it, we found that several people who are knowing to us very well among them. Thinking is good, but writing is hopeless. Very well thought, but writing is hopeless. What does he want to do? We are in the process of un updating the membership register. We have found, but it's gone down. We have found several of our members known to us very well have not paid up their membership fee. Okay, continue the same thing. Now the, the third one, that is the white one, I really got it on post, by post. You think I'll take that person? My application for the post of assistant engineer for your kind consideration. I shall be grateful to you if you will please call me for an interview. A big mistake. Surely that person will not be entertained. I'll tell you another story. Absolutely true. When I was the deputy general manager in charge of planning in the CV, I had two very young engineers coming from the same university, same batch, both having first classes. They were in my planning branch. After a couple of years, both of them wanted to go to AIT for higher studies. Both of them came to me and asked me to write a recommendation letter, letter of recommendation. I knew the AIT professor because I studied there also and the head of the department was a good friend of mine called Professor Ram Shrestha. I wrote to them, him, two letters of recommendation, very strongly recommending both of them. And after some time, one person was selected, the other one was not selected and I had the opportunity to go back to AIT and I met this guy. And over lunch, I asked Ram, now what happened? I sent two people, you said only one, I am curious to know why. You know what he said. You know what he said. Both of them got identical marks at the selection. I had tough time eliminating one because I had only one scholarship. I looked hard and hard and hard at the uh, application and the only way I could reject was because one application had too many English mistakes. Absolutely true, right? The person who got selected went to AIT, did his masters, thereafter he taught for a while there, went to Calgary, I think, in Canada, uh, got a PhD, came back to AIT, taught there, became a professor there, he is now a professor in Canberra. The other person is still in the CEB. I met that person about three days ago. See the destiny. See the destiny. See the price of the mistake of not writing correct English. Not writing correct English. If that person's appeal was also without any problems, there would have been a chance of the total destiny being changed. Right? So better be careful. Don't take things lightly. Don't take things lightly. Right. PL dot go through the report attached here with wrong. I shall be grateful if you could kindly go through the attached report. Right. Okay. Straight from the reports. Now, I told you that I am going to bring straight from the reports. 
some examples from the recent experience reports having difficulty in capitalization. When did we lo learn capitalization? In year one or year two at most. And this guy, after having studied for 14 years in school, another four or five years in campus, another four years working, this fellow does not know how to use capital letters. Look at it. Look at it. August simple. August simple. Put love simple. Not so simple. What a shame. Guys like you all trying to get the charter. Can I pass them? Don't know capitals. How to use capitals? Look at the other word maintenance. Everywhere throughout he is using the word maintains. 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 Probably he would have been uh, asked to come for the next interview. He will last about six months again. Okay. Right? So better be very careful. See the word China. Simple. No, doesn't it strike to the person that you know when I write something always a proper noun is the uh, capital? Right? Do you write your name with a simple letter? Why is this? All because of this gadget. People are enslaved to this gadget. Right? You start getting used to sending SMS. You don't care about the capitalization, it's very difficult. Right? And you write the same thing in the reports. So don't get caught to this kind of traps. Some more examples. Uh, I think the same guy. Capital used in all the wrong places. Right? Maintain stuff. Maintain stuff. Right? So I think it's the same guy. And it's from the Royal College. It's written there. I should ask the Royal College teachers. Here again, August, simple, right? Now this guy doesn't know where to, to separate sentences after a period. Throughout the report, once again, careless. Just sometimes some of these word documents uh, they 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 play. With the, with the the spaces, right? You have to be extra careful. No space between the two sentences. And the biggest thing, what is this word? What is this word? I have put two two question marks. What is this? I bearded bearded following responsibilities. Is there any word called bearded? I bear. What is the past tense? I bore. Simple things, simple things. And there are a couple of ladies here. One lady is about to go for the, on this leave. What is this kind of leave? Huh? What is this kind of leave? Martinet leave. Come on. Absolute carelessness. Right? Then the last one. I got a rare chance to join with sit on next report and this is something that people make a lot of mistakes they are called prepositions the use of prepositions should be carefully selected the certain place that we are used prepositions a certain use place where you should not use prepositions right so better be careful as I keep on telling you I am not an English teacher but study English the proper way I got a rare chance to join Ceylon electricity board I said the Sironics report if you want to. Never say I got a rare chance to join with Sironics report. Maybe you can say I joined uh, with my family to go on a trip. Right? But never to say I joined with that organization. With is there already. Now, this is another huge problem about pronunciation. We write the way we pronounce. I keep on telling, I'm not finding fault with you for so much for the way that you pronounce. Nobody may like, somebody may not like the way that I pronounce. 
that's my choice, no problem. But once again I tell you, the way that we are used to speaking, you can't write the way we pronounce, just like the past, for fast. What does it say? Though there are hundreds or thousands of laws, why is it? Surely it must be a Sinhalese guy. In Sinhala, we don't have all sound. Never, I don't think any word starts with all in Sinhala. Ohe, Obe, Ohomea, Ochalai, O, with a small mouth. So we can't pronounce very comfortably or oh, but loss is loss and not laws. If you say laws, people may forgive you, but if you write laws, I will not forgive you. That's for sure. That is the problem. You may pronounce the way you like it, no problem. Now go to fight for with you. But you gotta write the way you pronounce in written form. Keep that in mind. Right? So uh, there are some nice ones. They say, and I brought, yeah, yeah. Sri Lankan engineers, environment policies. Sri Lankan. Right? So some of us pronounce like that. But you can't write like that. And there are authorities. 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 Right? Okay. Power plant has to be installed, installed, I don't know, which was provided by Chinese, Chinese, the way you pronounce, careless mistakes. Now this guy always starts word with, word, sentence with all inappropriate words. Conjunctions can always be used with another phrase. So words like and, but, because. It's all conjunctions, which should have a phrase in front and back, right? So never start sentence with and also but because so and so forth. But the problem is these days you when you open up a newspaper when I was small, my mother used to always ask me to read newspapers to learn English. That served me right. But nowadays, if you ask your child, children to read the newspapers, they learn all crap, C-R-A-P crap, nonsense. You open a newspaper, there are many, many centers that start with that. Right? So please don't uh, be careful what you learn. So never start with and and but, because. Vulnerable threat, I don't know why and and realistic those we can't realistic those we can't realize those that's what he wants to say but look at this one not only starting a sentence and is wrong but in this case starting with a symbol and is even still worse i need a volunteer come come you came late last you have to come here the, come, 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 come. What is your name? Huh? Where are you working? SLT. SLT. Sri Lanka Telecom. Yes. So you must be very uh, taught how to read. Right? The rule is take one breath. Good, good. Lung full of breaths. In one breath you will read that. One breath, huh? I'm, I'm hitting you otherwise. Okay? Read the whole thing loudly in one breath. Being the country's state on electric utility in generation, transmission and distribution of electricity. Ceylon Electricity Board had a vast reserve of opportunities for gaining knowledge, practical skills in offer by giant of massive number of chartered engineers where I being an undergraduate in the field of electrical engineering and being on the verge of completing the degree could not even have imagined an alternative place to have undergone the, the implant training which would give better and more 
adequate op uh, opportunity to adapt myself from an academic to an industrial environment than what I was provided from CB by undergoing this train. How will you get to do? For each bit, I will get to do. Okay, okay. Right, right. Thank you very much. What kind of sentence is that? What kind of sentence is that? You go for five paragraphs. So don't get caught to write in these kind of long, 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 long sentences. Can anyone understand what is the meaning of this sentence? You forget somewhere in the middle what you read before. So better be very careful. Actually, this came from a very, very uh, good engineer. Right? Whom I, I thought we will get through from the, uh, the first attempt of the PR. Fortune came to me for correction. I did correction and said it. Right? So don't get into the habit of writing extremely long sentences. There was one, one sentence I have seen longer than this. That was in a legal agreement. There was one sentence of about three quarters of an A4 sheet paper. But that was a legal document. In legal jargon, you may have this kind of long, 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 long sentences just to make sure that you capture everything legally. But these are not legal documents. So don't give it to the habit of writing long sentences. Never start sentence with words like also, but, and. Who says this also? This is straight from another report. I in single we, we, we start eating, 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 eating. When you talk, eating dan no, the mayara gano kataka, eating dan no, sorry, sorry. Gano lamai. Gano lamai kataka, eating dan no, the mayara. Eating gani, eating mukhudi ani. Now that is slang. Don't put it, bring eating, eating back to writing skills. You don't need to. Right? Also, I must explain. Also, I learn another word, huge. Never use the words like huge. They are slang. Right? What do you say? Uh, with my bachelor's degree and SEMA qualification, I joined ABC company through a huge competition and a stringent selection process as a management trainee. Through a stiff competition. That's what he wants to say. Also, I was into social ethics, blah, blah, blah. Grammatically incorrect minute from a very important organization. The CEO initiates the discussion and explains the steps of he is being taken. He is being taken to address the present situation in the company. The CEO initiates the discussion and explains the steps he has taken to address the present situation in the company. Now I am going to get you to work. No escape. There are two phrases. Two sentences. The man was accused of the murder. The man was accused with the murder. Which is correct. Number one, how many of you say correct? First option. Second option. Sorry. Second option is wrong. The man was accused of the murder. Right? Anything and nothing. I am sure there are no Chinese around. Right? If I ask the Chinese, I will get one answer. If I ask you, you should, I should get this correct answer. She can't see anything. She can't see nothing. Who is correct? First one? Who says second one? No one says. Ah, one, one person says second. He is a China man. <laughs> All the Chinese, even the Singaporeans, who are good in English. Right? If you go there, you say, you can't see nothing. I can't do nothing. Right? That's wrong. I, she can't see anything. I, she can't see nothing. She can't see anything. I can't do anything. That's the correct way of putting it. Which one is correct? Among and between. The three boys divide the cake among themselves. The three boys divide the cake between themselves. First or second? First? 
Second, no, my dear boys and girls, between is always between two people. If anything between more than two, it should be a mom. Right? See, simple things, simple things, you make mistakes. It's good that you are making the mistakes. See, you learn. For and since. I waited for three hours already. I waited since three hours already. What is correct and what's wrong? First time? Second time? First time. First time is correct. Had better. This is a bit tricky. You have better to visit the client tomorrow. You have better to visit the client tomorrow. You have better visit the client tomorrow. First one. How many? Say correct. How many say for correct? First one. How many say correct the second one? In fact, what is correct is the second one. You have better visit the client tomorrow. Once again, the use of the two, the preposition, is in the wrong place. You have better, you don't say to visit, you have better visit. Okay? Now, where did this come from? This came from this particular document. I think uh, I told the ISL to make this available to you. There are 130 of such common mistakes we make. Right? So, please get a copy of this and read it. It's very, very useful. Extremely useful because the very, very simple words, simple sentence that we continue to use and you can immediately change, uh, correct yourself. The, the other one is a common mistake. This one gives a more in-depth analysis of various styles of writing, various styles of writing. Sometimes English is such a uh, very complicated language the style of writing can be correct grammatically in either way. Grammatically, you can't find anything wrong in a particular style. But the problem is that style is never used. You see a lot of them in the second book. The style of writing. Nobody can find fault with the style of writing in that particular fashion. But that is not the common way of using it. So it's very important that you go through these two documents very carefully. Uh, oh. I hope it will work. Huh? I was trying to improve. Uh, I was trying to increase the. So, you saw two identical yeah. things, the Sri Lankan way of talking and the correct way of talking, right? So, I am going to switch gear yeah, and talk about the mistakes that we make in talking. We make mistakes when in grammar, we make mistakes in pronunciation, we make mistakes in articulation in gesticulation and in context. Now, due to the course of this, uh, my entire this, uh, presentation to you, I may have made a lot of grammatical mistakes. 
you may not have even noticed. But if I continue to make a lot of grammatical mistakes, even while talking, you quickly regret that I am making a lot of mistakes. So what I am trying to get at across to you is that you can make small, small grammatical mistakes while talking or speaking a speech. Nobody will notice that. Right? But on the other hand, if you write it, people will even notice that. Now that doesn't mean to say that you should not learn grammatically correct English even to speak. Well, very often you find that when you people keep on making mistakes, it's very irritating to the ear. The first you have to get used to that wrong way of speaking. Right? Second and the most prominent that people can notice is the pronunciation. Now pronunciation is something that you got to learn the hard way. The only way I can uh, recommend you to learn is by listening to something like BBC. The BBC actually they use a lot of uh, Asians when they say beam to Asia. The same channel BBC you see a lot of Indians, the people like from Hong Kong, Singapore, Sri Lankans Right, they beam, they, they speak in the BBC. So that's quite all right to learn the way they speak uh, in the BBC. I recently there was a big thrust for English education in the country, and there are a lot of uh, prominent Sri Lankans brought in to uh, say a few things in the TV and the radio. I don't quite agree with them. Because they were making mistakes and telling it's all right. It's not all right to make mistakes. But we can accept it. That's no issue. But you can't advertise, speak in the wrong way and say it's all right. So they didn't like it so much. So pronunciation is very important. You've got to learn it the hard way. Listen to some uh, good programs. Then you can correct your mistakes. Articulation. Articulation is put in the thoughts into words. Now I told you that thinking process is very important. Now while writing, whichever you think is okay because you can write something, go through it again and correct it and if you think it, thought process has not really gone into the writing, you can still correct it. We have a big problem while speaking or making a speech or while talking. The moment you put the word out, you can't bring it back. Somebody said it, he has said it. There's no way that you can correct it. Therefore, the thinking process has to be synchronized with your talking speed. I have seen people struggling to talk. Right? So you have to get over this struggle to talk. How can I do that? Where is the best place? Every day we have it in the bathroom. We spend some time, right? Talk to yourself. Who cares? Your wife might come and say, Hey, who is with you there? Nobody is with me there, but you know, I speak, speak, make a speech. Right? Hear yourself talking and check, am I speaking sense? Right? So practice, practice, practice. Because the articulation is very important. What, what, is, what springs up in your mind has to be synchronized and put out in the same pace. But the problem is we know that mind works much faster than your lips. You've got to work on it. You've got to practice it. The gesticulation, I, I said uh, what gesticulation means and the context in which you speak. That is if you speak some out of context, people say you are talking nonsense. So they don't allow people to say that you are talking nonsense. Right? What are the common mistakes we make in uh, speaking? All of you all are going to the party now. Very common thing. All of you all are going to the party now. It's wrong. What you want to say is, are you all going to the party? Are you all going to the party? The, in English, the moment you start a, start a sentence with a question, it's, it's understood. Are you all going to the party? Alright? 
if you listen to a Britisher coming from England, this is not the way he tells. He tells it in a slightly different manner. You all are going to the party, aren't you? You all are going out for dinner, aren't you? You all are going on a trip, aren't you? Right? The state managers all agree to give a salary increase to workers. What is wrong in this? Come on, I want you to speak. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? Huh? I can't hear. I'm short of hearing. I'm very old. Estate. Who said that? Who said that? Someone said estate. Where is that guy? I showed this just two two hours ago to a group of engineers. I took about five minutes for them to spot what the mistake was. Believe me, this is the second time I am doing this lecture today. Right? There are about forty engineers, and none of them could spot what was wrong until they went on eliminating one after the other. They said workers is wrong, increase is wrong, the grid is wrong, this that is wrong, that is wrong, everything. They never spotted the word stay is wrong. Right? Who is the manager of the state? The president. But we make this mistake very often. That all the state managers agree to grant a salary increase to workers. No time, no to do all this works is okay in slang. In slang it's all right. Casual talk it's all right. No time, no to do all this works. The correct thing is there is not enough time to attend to this work, all this work. What men can't you remember me? How many of us say that? What men can't you remember me? That's okay in, ca in loose talk, casual talk, slang. What is the correct way of saying? You can remember me, can't you? Or can you remember me? Can you remember me? You can remember me, can't you? The abundant tea factory will be rendered soon. What's wrong? The abundant tea factory will be rendered soon. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's the correct word? Abandoned. Abandoned tea factory will be rendered soon. The abandoned tea factory will be rendered soon. There was a guy who always used to say abundant, abundant, abundant. We didn't step last time. What's wrong? Easy. If we not tell this, I don't know what to say. Past few weeks, we mostly together with so as such as we spent the past few weeks with so many people. Haha. <laughs> Who is a warrior? Who is a warrior? To this guy, generally I usually correct people when they make mistakes. And this particular guy I just could not correct. So he was way high up in a position. But every meeting, every meeting, for him, a person who worries is a warrior. Do you know worry? A person who kills, warrior. Right? The warrior who is fighting for the cause. So for this person, a person who worries a warrior. is wrong. My greatest warrior is the chef taker to complete the job. He keeps on saying this at every meeting. My greatest worry is the time taken to complete the job. Pronunciation. As I said before, practice makes perfect. Boy and boy. Now the problem to me is this. The person who calls boys are playing cricket, in the same breath he will tell, there's a boy in the sea. If you put a boy in the sea, he will sink and die. The, bo the boy, the word comes from the word boyance. The floating in the sea. 
The boats are put there to, for ships to know or shipping vessels to or the uh, fisher, fishing people to show that there is something, object or something there or to guide some shipping lane. Right? Or to give some markers in the sea. Boys. The same person will say, boys are playing cricket, we say, boys are floating in the sea. Whereas the correct thing is, boys are playing cricket and boys are floating in the sea. I just can't understand why they make this mistake. Horse and horse. I have heard many people saying, I plant, I, I watered my plant with a horse. You allow the horse to water the plant, the plant will die in two weeks. Don't ever allow the horse to water your plants. The same way, don't ever ride to ride a horse. Your buttocks will go and hit the ground. Right? So be careful. You ride a horse and water the plants with a horse. Right? Not and not. Secretaries don't take knots. They take notes. Your son doesn't get note for arithmetic. Your son will get not for arithmetic. Full and full. Now this is crazy. The person who says my glass is full when he goes to a takofa, you know, in the Urdukali, he shout, full, 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 macha, full. Full the road, full. I come and say, the glass is full. What's wrong with our fellows? Now here I don't give an excuse. Right? The glass can be full and you have to pull the rope. Seat and sheet. What are you sitting on? Seats, not sheets. Just imagine sitting on a sheet here. Where are you sitting on the ground? Right? So we don't make don't make these kind of stupid mistakes. Four and four. Now this is a nice story behind it. My wife one day went with my driver. Uh, along the Athurgiri road, I am sure you would have heard about this Pore Junction. So unfortunately she didn't know about Pore Junction. She only had a piece of paper where the instructions were written. It said, go along the Athurgiri road, turn off at P-O-R-E Junction. So she read it as Pore Junction. So she told my driver, Pore Junction again Harawan. Hurry madam. I think you would have gone nearly to Kodega, no? at the end of the road. Then my wife thinks there is something wrong. Where are you going? I am going to go to the next junction. No? Fine, Po is four. He is going looking for a four way junction. Absolute truth. Right? Now, for all our drivers, there are no roundabouts in this country. Never, never, never see the roundabout. They all see roundabout. Our drivers see only roundabouts. No roundabouts. So whenever you hear the driver say roundabout, Sir, may roundabout take around with Tell. No, you mad fellow, it's not roundabout, it's a roundabout. Right? And for all our drivers, 100%, there are no shakab sobers. There are only shakat sobers. Right? Is there any driver who says shakab sober? Never in my life. I never heard. Any driver saying shakab sober. Shakat sober. Round the bow. Correct them. My driver used to, after some time, became an odd one out. When he goes to the driver's space, he Talks the normal way when he comes to the car, he takes the correct way. So, we have a big problem. Simple words we mix up. It's and it's. Who knows the difference? Who doesn't know the difference? If you don't know, please put your hands up. Right? Yeah. IT apostrophe S is it is. 
the shortened form for it is right its color is red right you just point out right? it's, its its tail is wagging the dog right cooperation and cooperation i am sure you know the difference if there anybody who don't know the difference please put your hands up i'll tell you what the difference is but the problem is those of you who know the difference you don't know the cooperation is cooperation that is sahayoga cooperation so you are you are at you in is sangstha right so lot of people make this mistake there and there it was only just today i read a report where there and there is fixed up in fact the group of people to whom i spoke i showed this because it's from one of their reports i had one more slide i didn't share sure i'm not going to show it to you i showed it to them right mixing up the word there in different forms here and here here and here don't mix up you know these things but you still make the mistake abandoned and abandoned i think i i gave an example estate and state i gave an example dentist and dental surgeon is there anybody who is married to a dental surgeon or dentist here in this group no one husbands or wives never never seen a dentist who do you go to when you want to extract a tooth dentist how many of you go to dentist put your hands up you don't go to dentist you never get a dentist appointment you get you know dentist surgeon what is the difference between these two ha huh? dentist clean the teeth ha I am yet to go to a dentist who cleans my teeth. Like huh? Like technician. Dentist or dental technician? They are only good in making teeth for you, right? Dental surgeon is a qualified doctor who can work on your teeth. So next time, don't go to a dentist to pull out a tooth. Go to dental surgeon. But nine nine per point nine percent of us go for the dentist's appointment, haven't we? Until today, right? Have you ever said that I am going to a uh, appointment with the dental surgeon? Dentist, I got an appointment with the dentist. Is that what we have, we have been saying? So better be careful. Nobody find fault with you, but better to be correct and teach others that too, uh, what the correct thing is. Education department, department of education. This stuff is wrong in the both uh, usages. But the British way of saying is Department of Education, Department of Commerce, Department of Agriculture, Department of Examinations, Department of Education and Immigration. But we very often use the word Education Department, Agriculture Department. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. But better way of saying is Department of. Runway and runway. What is the difference? What is the difference between runway and runway? Ah? Huh? You find runways in the airports. Where do you find runways? Ah? Huh? Sorry? Sorry? Playground? Ah? Huh? You said something. Leave and go away. When people uh, they don't get consent to marry, they run away in the moonlight. You hold the, ah, huh? get the bag of the girl and run away. They run away. But run away, you find only the airports. But how many of us say the plane is has touched the, down on the run away? The airport run away. How many of us say that? It's wrong. finally talk sense right for others to understand 
be precise and concise. Don't use the words if you do not understand the meaning and pronounce correctly. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? Good. I hope you have got something. Okay.